from who here know, the, know Deezer? I know, yeah, it's a French company, so everyone's pretty familiar with it, I guess. Uh, so I'm responsible for the Deezer platform, so if you were not aware of it, we have an open API and SDK for people to use Deezer with, either within their websites or within Deezer itself in the service. And today I want to share my experience uh, launching the Deezer API, so how we did it, um, how that impacted the whole company actually. So starting an API is just not you know, releasing a service or a REST API, but it's also, you know, impacting almost everyone in the company. So I'm all about sharing that with you guys. Um, and that's about it. And I have also worked for Microsoft for a few years. So I've seen also how um, such a big company and how, you know, being a platform impacts also such a big company. So I'll talk a bit about that later. So uh, Deezer, you know the service launched in 2006, became legal in 2008, and the platform launched actually a year and a half ago. And when you see those numbers, like uh, API companies all become billionaires with crazy numbers and crazy calls. Like uh, if you've seen Lawrence talk uh, from Facebook showing how crazy uh, the Facebook figures are, like they have tens of millions of active users every day, and, that's the same for the API. So when you see those numbers and you're in your startup of, oh, bigger than startup, but in your small company, you're like, I want to do that as well. Like, I would love to have billions of API calls on these as well. So you see that. And you see also from Programmable Web that you have 30K APIs. So everybody's thinking the same, that we should all build APIs. That's the way to go. That's the way to open your company to the world. So you, you think, are, you, are we really ready for this? And you get back at the numbers and say, of course we're ready for this, come on. <laughs> Billions. So you start you know, making your API available. So it always starts usually with someone technical from your engineering team. So uh, for us, that's an API developer, so PHP JavaScript expert that started it. And he starts it and then you think, for whom? should we make that API available? Sure, we start small and just, you know, getting an API internally first to get our mobile apps working. So that's how we started. We had some core methods, core functions from Deezer, and we started internally just to make sure that we have the, at least that internally we mutualize the development uh, work. Then uh, we start building partnerships, like uh, one of the most famous ones here is with Orange. And with uh, Orange, we have a partnership and they're using uh, now a partner API, so some advanced tools that they need. Uh, but ultimately, if you want to reach those billions that you just seen, you should obviously go open and make your API available to the world. So that's what we did. And by whom? I told you about that developer, so there's lots of developers talented out there. So the one in the middle is Daniel, the founder, the Deezer founder, uh, and obviously you know the other ones. So congratulations, your API is here. So the API, uh, it was in 2012, like last year, the API. So you can just go now to developers.diesel.com and you have your API available. And now that you've made that available, you have the REST services, you have the SDKs for the players and everything. And it's not like you can drop it, like your baby's born, you have your API, and now it's all about getting that, you know, keeping that alive. Because you, if you're lucky, you have press, you have people talking about it. So it's not like you can drop it and tell your new partners, yeah, no, we're sorry, we're just stopping that. Uh, our developers just left on vacations. So you have your API and you wait for the magic to happen. Like, nice, we have that API, we have the product available for everyone. We're ready to enter the app economy and, you know, get those billions we saw. But you should wait, obviously, wait. Wait, because that's not magic. Like, <laughs> you should not open your API and expect that everyone will use it and love it. That's obviously not how that happens. But if you're lucky, at least a few people, like a few curious people will start using it. And you'll be lucky to have those people because they'll make critical feedback to you and also something that you won't like, but they will report a lot of bugs as well. 
So you start to have a very, very long list of things you should do. Like you started small, you started with a small API, but then when people use it, obviously they want to go further and they want to get more out of it. So you have your list of bugs and your list of features, and then your one developer starts being a bit overwhelmed. So if, you, if that works well enough, you should really start thinking about hiring and building a whole team for that. And as your product evolves, like for example, uh, at Deezer we just announced uh, a new product, uh, almost a new homepage. So have you seen that new homepage? Like, last, like we shipped it last month. Who've seen it? Great, I have something to show you. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope, uh, I'm not sure I have enough um, network, but let's see. Well, there's no sound, but doesn't matter. We just released a new homepage um, with stated music recommendations. So whenever you start going to Deezer, that's not the old homepage with only banners on it, that's a whole a new feed where, where with customized recommendation made by algorithms and the editorial team. So we had people working with labels and everything uh, to get, see these people all around the world picking the right music for you. And, and we have a filter that makes sure that that's actually music that will interest you. So you ship that, and the product and marketing teams are all happy about it. Because, yeah, that's, we see people switching back from other platforms, and we are very happy about it. But to me, um, platform-wise, that means new stuff to do in the API, and people coming to me and say, hey, when do I get that in the API? So the list I just showed you just gets bigger and bigger. But anyways, that's our job to make that available, so we just do it. But once, we, once it's done, we should let people know about it. We should tell our small community of developers to, that they have that available, so that makes someone else need it for that. Like, our developers cannot develop their features and let people know and do the marketing about it. So you have usually someone like an evangelist or developer advocate that will let people know where things happen. So here, that's the uh, Deezer Twitter account where we let people know when things happen. So the platform team just got bigger from a few developers with advocates and marketing teams. And that's true whatever your API type is. So whether that's uh, just your API is your product or just is projecting your product and this API is just around everywhere the types here. I could get back to that in more detail if you like. And once it's done and you have cool new features like that developers that could get the teaser recommendations within the API. So that allows your business development team to find new partnerships. So for Deezer, for example, uh, we recently announced a partnership with Soundrop. I don't know if you're familiar with Soundrop, but that's music chat rooms, basically. So you can listen to music synchronized with your friends, wherever, you are, wherever they are. And they make some live chats with artists. And we have that really very cool app uh, shipped and that app that uses Deezer API. So once the business development team managed to get that app using Deezer API, um, now that might be of interest of the Deezer users. For example, if I have a live chat with the Bloody Beach Roots, uh, maybe the fans of this artist on Deezer would like to know. And then your API, the API partnership you just built just impacts it also the business development and marketing team. And they can start you know, being creative about it and start creating new experience and actually enhancing your product, which is probably what you wanted at first launching your API. And uh, for us, it's a very critical question. Like, it's also time when you start building such partnerships to think about your business model. 
because uh, I think you're familiar with the music model and how we work in Deezer. And the tricky, that's really tricky to find the model for, for developers and for apps. So then our legal team, that's pretty big for such a small company, gets involved. And I spell you the details, but that's a, such a nice discussion to have. But anyways, you, you find some ways to work and you, you find some ways to make it work. And you start, you know, actually to manage to spare and share revenue with your developers and your apps. And you see that and you, you get back and you see, okay, I have cool apps, I have a developer community. And where are the billions and where are the API calls? So I hope that you've been smart in conceiving your API and logging everything because you really critically need your numbers. Also for building your business model, you really need to know how many people are using your API, what your overall usage is. And for your partnerships, you should also be able to tell the people you're working with how many, how many calls they made and how successful they were. And loop on that all the time to check back. And that's also useful for developers. So at least they know among the thousand features that people ask what's actually used within the API. And suddenly you, you have a step back and you look at your company and people develop partnerships. The sales team is actually trying to sell solutions using your API. The product team uh, is being creative and you, even your tech team is using the API new products. Like for example, um, the drive we are now, we just announced a month ago a desktop app, app for Deezer, and that desktop app is using the Open API. So the API starts by supposed to be small, and then it's used by partners, customers, and also internally. And you have yeah that step back, and you realize that in your company everybody talking APIs. And the API started just by the side projects just become really the center of the company. And I have really funny discussions with the sales team and people in the partnerships once because even though that's impacting your whole company, doesn't mean that everyone gets it. Like an API still remains a technical product and people you know, are not all fluent talking API and SDKs and especially in these when you are working with encryption, the streams and everything. So that's, that's funny how also you should train the people to have the right language about it. But, and also it's not like you're in the middle of everything because the API is just the API, it's not the product, it's not Deezer, it's not the Deezer app. So you have to find a way to make people understand that, uh, but also take the time to get trained. So you have the right people to make that and to make your API successful within your company. So you can either outsource it or uh, like with what Deezer, get that working internally. And if you have a look at the people that you should need to be successful with an API and to scale, uh, you have a lot of people from the tech team, but also in the sales and marketing field. And for example, here I'm not saying that you should have one people for each matter here, because I mean, unless you're tens of thousands of people, you won't have those people, but have at least have someone filling those. So for example, at Deezer, we are currently four people and I feel uh, virtually uh, like three or four of these positions, like I'm the evangelist, the platform marketing and the partner support. And I'm here today also to talk to you about the platform and have colleagues handling business development and app marketing. So some people can just do several tasks, tasks at once just for the time for you to scale. And uh, if I take an extreme example, like I was also working as an evangelist at Microsoft and that was entirely different. Like we were tens of, I mean, hundreds of evangelists. And when that's like that, when you're locally working as an evangelist, say, for example, explaining Microsoft APIs and SDKs for Windows, that's not the same at all. Like you're so far away from the product team that you can't, like I'm doing right now, get the right mix of support and have feedbacks on products evolutions. So when you scale and when you go international, you should be careful really to always keep that link with the product, which is critical for me to success. 
So here I just noted the roles that can be local, but that shouldn't really lose the, the contact and the touch with the product. And now if I, you know, switch back to Deezer and I, I you know, as a conclusion, look at where we are one year and a half uh, after launching the API, we are not at billions that would be, you know, I wouldn't, um, that would have been nice. But we are on the way and if I look at the numbers, we are still standing at tens of millions of calls and it's growing like 20% a month. So we are on the way and we are looking for people, but that's just talk to me later for that. So I hope that sharing that experience is useful to you guys also that are launching API and thank you, thank you very much for your attention. I don't know if we have time for questions, just let me check the clock. Yeah, I've been pretty fast actually. So you have questions? whatever on what the API has or how we work or anything. Anybody wants to take the opportunity to talk to an expert? <laughs> Thanks. So how does your API uh, differ from Spotify and the other uh, music offerings? Yeah, so that's... Um, comes back to the question and in how these are different from Spotify things. Uh, both APIs are projecting the products, so mostly, and that would be first a matter of how different we are. And the difference between Deezer and Spotify is uh, mo mostly, I mean, we're both on music on demand services, so that would be really similar. Uh, but Deezer has more work on label relationships and editorial that I've told you about. So we're working a lot locally to make sure that we have the right music for the right people. And we tend to be less mainstream in terms of content that we have and in terms of content that we push in the discovery service. So we worked a lot actually on curation and music discovery and we are doing currently, I'm pretty objective, I think better than them in that perspective. And you have lots of things also that we will web first. And in terms of mobile apps, then you make your own choices. But the Deezer apps are really cool and working really well. And that it tends to be, in terms of just the player working, be better than Spotify. And in terms of APIs, um, we made totally different choices in terms of which technology we make available. Uh, to our users. So um, they kicked actually a C library first and a REST API for metadata. And uh, what happened to them is that it became pretty difficult to use that C library, like C developers and you know good developers in C and at low level languages are not that you know familiar with APIs and developers are more familiar with JavaScript and those kinds of APIs. So they have different, they target a different developer populations. And for lately they released also a JavaScript SDK for apps within Spotify, uh, but it still remains very low level. Like you can see that history in the, in the API. In the meantime, uh, our choice with Deezer was to be uh, the simplest as possible. So um, I think a third of uh, our API usage is made by the widgets, so the, just the players that you can embed in any website or any app. And the two thirds left uh, are sp split between the JavaScript, iOS, and Android SDK. And the JavaScript SDK, our SDK is the most widely used in terms of m music APIs, since uh, you don't have very much to do to get it to work. Like, you have probably in ten, 10 lines of code, you can just get it to work and get a player, a custom player within your app. And uh, the difference with the Spotify APIs, for example, is that with the JavaScript, the Deezer JavaScript SDK, you can have apps running inside the Deezer apps. So with JavaScript, you can just build, for example, the SoundDrop example I just told you about. 
you can get that app running within Deezer.com, but also within the iOS and Android apps, since we have uh, what we call an app studio, like an app store, uh, on web and mobile. And that's the same SDK and the same code that you will have responsively on web and on mobile. And we really work we worked really hard on that uh, to get that to work and to get that on mobile because we know that mobile is you know the not the future is there already, and we have more than half of our users using our apps from mobile. I have a question. Uh, so. Um uh, Deezer made a new API version, completely redesigned, one year and a half. Yeah. So, um, and my question is, what is the version two, the open API effect of the version two compared to the version one? Just to share how, um, by making a new version, more well-designed, more uh, mm. developer-oriented, what it changed in the developer adoption for, the, for Deezer, what it has changed? Yeah. Uh, actually, the first version was just a trial, and we we didn't invest that much in that API, and that was more an API that was born out of the need to work with partners. So we didn't have time to really think about the best practices on the APIs, like off and all, like uh, everything that should be on the API. So releasing that second version at that second cycle really, you know, took us towards a real strategy to developers. Like we really felt that that was the right thing to do and that was also the time where Deezer hired someone to take care of that and to make sure that we have the right tools for the right people. No, it's great. So uh, we have time for one last question. So you wanna see Isabel Moni talking, I understand you. So <laughs> thank you, thank you so much to talk.